chapter, we're going to learn three different ways to do this. Our first way to calculate the delta H of a reaction is to do it in lab. We're going to do it in lab using a process called calorimetry. Well, metry here means to measure. Guess what color means? Color? Guess you didn't take Spanish. Heat. There we go, heat. So calorimetry here is a way of measuring heat. And here's how we would do this in lab. What you'd start with here is a container full of water. But we've got to be very careful about heat here. So instead of just putting this water in a beaker, for example, we're going to put it into a heavily insulated container. Like, let's say, a big thermos bottle. We're going to make sure everything's nice and insulated here. And we're going to measure the initial temperature of this water using a thermometer. Into this water of carefully controlled temperature, we're going to place a chamber. And in that chamber, we're going to have our reactants, which in this case are hydrogen and oxygen. And we'll also have some wires coming up here so we can remote control this thing. And a big red button. I'll make it red just because we can. So what's going to happen here is when I press that red button, we're going to ignite the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, and the reaction will proceed to form water. This container here is watertight. However, if heat is produced, heat will come out of this reaction chamber and heat up the surrounding water. So there we have it. And of course, we'll have to insulate off the top here as well to prevent any heat loss. So this is how we do calorimetry. We simply note the initial temperature of this water. We ignite this mixture and see how much heat energy is produced here and how much this water around is heated up. If we know that temperature difference, we know how much water we have here, and we know exactly how hard it is to heat up water, we can mix all these numbers together and calculate the delta H for the reaction. This technique specifically, by the way, is called bomb calorimetry. Sound fun? Definitely. Definitely. I can still remember this. This is just how much this traumatized me. When I was an undergraduate taking physical chemistry, I looked up in my lab book and I saw this week we're doing bomb calorimetry in lab. And I was all excited. Ooh, bomb calorimetry. This is going to be a lot of fun. So we go into lab. Everything is set up just like I showed you right here. The button was pressed. Hear that? I'll do it again for you. Nothing. That is, no, it was nothing. It was a, that was the net total sound from the bomb calorimeter. That was a big, that was traumatic. It still traumatizes me to this day. But this is exactly why we're not going to do this in lab. It's kind of boring. So there it is. We could theoretically do this in lab. However, this is one of the, uh, the weird lessons of chemistry. As you go further on in chemistry, this becomes more abundantly clear. Chemists try to avoid going in the lab as much as humanly possible. So when you get to be an advanced chemist and you got a neat idea, you have your little flunky underlings do the lab work for you. A real advanced chemist never sets foot in the lab. So, let's try another method. How can we calculate delta H without doing it in the lab? Well, one method is using tabulated delta HF values. A delta HF is a change in heat, but this F here means formation. This is called a heat of formation. And these heat of formation values are tabulated. In fact, they're tabulated in your very textbook. Everybody grab your textbook, open that up. 